Okay, let's take, let's take a minute and talk about the dividend received deduction. Now the purpose of the dividend received deduction is to mitigate multiple taxation on corporate income. So without the deduction, any income paid to a corporation in the form of a dividend would be taxed to the recipient corporation and there'd be no corresponding deduction to the distributing corporation. So later when the recipient corporation paid the income to its shareholders, that income would again be subject to taxation with no deduction for the corporation. So the dividend received deduction alleviates this in inequity by causing some and sometimes all or a better way to say that is some or none of the dividend income to be taxable to the recipient corporation. Now we'll go through this example but here's typical percentages that you see. Now, this relates to the recipient corporate corporate shareholder holds in a domestic corporation making the dividend distribution. So look at what we see here. The percentage of ownership by the corporate shareholder, if it's less than 20 percent, the deduction per percentage is 70 percent. If the percentage of ownership by a corporate shareholder is 20 percent or more but less than 80 percent, then it's an 80 percent deduction. And when the percentage ownership by the corporate shareholder is 80% or more, it's 100%. Okay, and in that last case, they do point out that the payer corporation must be a member of an affiliated group with the recipient corporation. Now let's point out a few other facts. The dividends received deduction cannot exceed the taxable income limitation and the limitation is equal to the corporation's taxable income multiplied the, by the percentage that corresponds with the deduction percentage. So this means that if the, care, if the corporate shareholder owns less than 20 percent of the stock in the distributing corporation, the dividend received deduction is limited to the 70 percent that you see there. And taxable income is computed without regard to any NOL deduction without regard to domestic production activities deduction, without regard to dividends received deduction, and any capital loss carryback. But keep in mind the taxable income limitation does not apply if the corporation has an NOL for the current taxable year. Now, here's the steps that you use to apply these rules. Okay, first, you multiply the dividend received by the deduction percentage, then you multiply the taxable income by the deduction percentage, and then you limit the deduction to the lesser of either one or two above unless deducting the amount derived in step one results in, a, in an NOL. If so, the amount derived in step one is used and this is called the NOL rule. Okay, so let's work through this example. We've got Red, White, and Blue Corporation. There are three unrelated corporate calendar year corporations, right? And during the year, here's what they have. Gross income, 400, 320, and 260,000 for red, white, and blue, respectively. The expenses, 340, 340, and 340. So the same expenses across these unrelated corporations. The dividends received from a domestic corporation where there was less than 20% ownership was 200,000 in each case. So the taxable income before the dividends received deduction would then be 260,000 for red, 180,000 for white, and 120,000 for blue. Okay, now we're going to work through that three-step procedure. So step one, we take 70% of 200,000 for red, white, and blue. And you know what? I should line this exactly underneath so it's easier to follow. Here, doesn't that look better? No, it's as close as I can get it. Okay, then at step two, we take 70% of the taxable income. So we take 70% of the 260,000 that came from right here, 70% of 180,000 that came from here, and 70% of 120,000 that came from here. Now, white corporation is subject to the 70% taxable income limitation. It doesn't qualify for the NOL rule treatment because if you subtract 140,000, Step one, from the 180,000, which is, which is the taxable income before the dividend received deduction, it doesn't result in a negative figure. 
Now, if you look at blue, they do qualify for the NOL rule because when we subtract the 140 from the 120, which is the taxable income before the dividend received deduction, they get a negative amount. So the result is each corporation has a dividend received deduction for the year. It's 140,000 for red. It's right there, 126 for white, and 140 for blue.